Dear Dr. King, you left so suddenly we never had time to say goodbye. It really seems like yesterday, but we realize it has actually been a year since you went away. Needless to say, we all miss you. We might have written to you sooner, but it was so difficult for us to convince ourselves that you were really gone. There are no words to describe how we felt when we knew for sure that we would never see you again. Today, April 4th, 1969, is the first anniversary of your leaving us. It is also the celebration of the Passover and crucifixion of Christ. Therefore, our hearts are doubly sad. Calvary is fresh in our hearts and minds, and so are you. We could not possibly remember Jesus without thinking of you. It was you that reflected the beauty of Christ. It was you that preached the brotherhood of man. It was you that brought out all of the good in us. In you, we saw no ugliness. Years ago, we stood at the foot of the Lincoln Memorial and heard your I Have a Dream speech. We came away from that place feeling wonderfully warm inside, thinking we had been transformed. We did not think we could ever again be unkind. We thought we had shed our hatred for each other. We no longer felt alienated. We just knew for sure that our common humanity was the bond that had reconciled us to each other. We sincerely wished at that time that those beautiful concepts would have somehow inspired all people and brought about a better relationship between the blacks and whites of this country. When we take a retrospective view of our achievements, we must confess that we have done very poorly. Yet, we thank you for making us think we could be better. Since you've been away, nothing has changed very much, but it may delight your heart to know that in the not too distant future, America is going to put a man on the moon. We think it's a great achievement too, though we do not quite understand why America would not spend the same kind of time, talent, and money to secure the rights of all of its citizens. We do not see much sense in going over the things you already know, but we would like to mention briefly that the war in Vietnam is still going on. People are daily killing each other as if God did not make life precious. Sometimes we doubt whether or not we will be able to make your dream a reality. We spend a good portion of our time and energy hating each other. Some of the whites in this country still refuse to admit that there is racism in America, and they continually ask, what do those black people want? The minute the question is raised, the committees are formed and reports are written. Then we go right back where we started. So far, the committees and reports have not disturbed us too much, but we strongly suspect that somewhere in the shadows, there are some black committees who will want to write about what's wrong with white people and what they want. We are indeed frightened by this because it might take another 400 years for black people to find out what white people are all about. God forbid. Forgive us for thoughts so dismal, but sometimes we find ourselves cursing the darkness rather than lighting a candle. By now, you should be enjoying the company of Robert Kennedy. He left to join you two months after you were gone. We had no idea that he too would be leaving so soon. Had we known, we might have shown more affection for him. Sunday is Easter, and we're going to dress up as usual in our finery, and we will most likely go to church where there will be standing room only. And in the midst of all the gaiety, we are apt to forget that it is the day set aside to honor our risen Lord. Many of us will rededicate ourselves to your dream. And when we have fully embraced your concept of love, we know that there will be forever beating at the door of our souls a great desire to commit our lives to helping others. One last thought. 
we did not forget to tell everyone that you were indeed a great drum major. In fact, we think you were the greatest that we've ever had. Now we're glad that you are free at last.